Welcome to my channel, Living Linux. In this video, I'm going to show you Ether SX2 on Windows on ARM. But first, there is some sad news. Because the developer for Ether SX2, he's really fed up with all the impersonating the complaints, the demands, and now even death threats. And on the 10th, he said that he's not actively online in any community. So it's a pity. And yes, I really hope that at some point in time, he can find the fun again in developing Ether SX2. And the people with the unrealistic demands, the unfair complaints, and it's completely ridiculous that people just actually have sent death threats to him. That doesn't make any sense at all. So perhaps in the future, he might find his fun again. Um, I wish for him that um, he can find the fun back again. And well, what it looks like now is that I guess he should not participate in any open channels just with the people he trusts. And that way he can shield himself off from all the complaints, demands and death threats. Well, that was the bad part. The good part is, is that you can still download Ether SX2 and perhaps most people uh, use it on Android, but it's actually available on a lot of platforms and specifically on ARM. So here's Android, but all the other releases, you can find them in desktop. So here you can see Windows, but that is specifically Windows on ARM. And also Mac, that's specifically Mac on ARM. And perhaps that's also where some of the complaints and demands were coming from, because there is no iPhone release and it seems that at least several people were demanding it and I don't know the reasons why there is no iPhone release but the author has said multiple times that he has no plans for it at least not now and people should stop asking I've already tested uh, Ether SX2 also on Linux, and that's also with ARM, with my Phytium D2000, Octa-Core, and AMD Radeon GPU. And I actually also tested it with uh, the Raspberry Pi with Fedora, because um, there is a Vulkan driver for the Raspberry Pi on Linux. But unfortunately, the chip on the Raspberry Pi 4 doesn't have enough power to run uh, PlayStation 2 games. So here's the file for Windows on ARM. And in my case, I have Windows 11 on ARM on a Samsung Galaxy Book Go. And the Samsung Galaxy Book Go, it has a Snapdragon 7C Gen 2. It can clock up to 2.55 gigahertz. It has eight cores, but only two of them are big cores. And it has six efficiency cores. Okay. So I already downloaded the file, I already extracted it, and I've done some tests. 
So, but I will leave the link for the Ether SX2 website in the description. So we don't need this anymore. And you can start it like this. I already um, set a directory with my game, in this case Final Fantasy X. And you also have to set a bias file. And I think for the rest you can go with the defaults. The only thing is, is that if you have a controller, and in my case, I used to test with a PlayStation 3 controller connected to a USB port. So I'm going to connect it. And then you can see that it pops up. But unfortunately the pairing doesn't work. So yeah, at least with Windows 11 on ARM, um, well, I wasn't able to use a PlayStation 3 controller, but I also have a PlayStation 4 controller and I can connect that through USB. And here you can see that it pops up. And then you can go to controller port one, do automatic mapping for the PS4 controller. And then from there you should be good to go. Now I've noticed that um, for most of the things, uh, the Snapdragon 7C Gen 2 is more than fast enough, but there are some graphical effects that really slows down. And from what I can see in that case, then the GPU is the bottleneck and that's from the CPU side. Um, it's, I think it doesn't get above 20%, something like that. So, uh, if we go to one of the scenes where you can see some serious slowdown. Um, so first I'll just set it to three times native. And here from the intro, you can see it's all good. No problem at all. Looks very nice. But now there's one of those effects where you can see that it really has some performance issues. So here we go. And yeah, there's some sort of distortion effect on the whole screen. Um, and that's where you can see here that it really slows down. But when we set it back to two times native, then you can see that it's smooth again. And also when we look at the CPU load, then the CPU load is not, not so bad. I mean, like, like I said, it's around 20%. So comparing it with, for instance, like the Rockchip RK3588, I guess that the Snapdragon in general is faster, but when it comes to certain graphical effects that the rock chip, probably the GPU, um, I don't know if it's got to do with anything with the drivers and the difference between running on Android and running on Windows, because here you can see that it's using Direct3D12, so perhaps some of the graphical effects that it's hard to translate them to Direct3D, I don't know. So let's just say we go to the other effect where we also saw some performance issues, for instance, like on the Rockchip RK3588. So we're going back to three times the resolution. And that's also when we tested with, for instance, like the Mikotronics, 
with the Rockchip RK3588 that most of the things um, we could set the resolution to three times also, also with the Rockchip RK3588 but some effects yeah that they seem to be quite heavy on the GPU so let's go to the other one and perhaps you remember this from one of my other videos this demi attack yeah here you can see that it slows down and here's also some slowdown and you can see that the gpu really spikes to 100 percent so if we go back to two times native then perhaps you want to tweak it a bit with two and a half or 2.25 who knows but i'm too lazy to test this so we go back to two times resolution and here we get that demi attack again and you can see that the gpu There's some serious spikes in the GPU, but with two times the resolution, then you should be good to go. So again, I really hope that the developer of Ether SX2, that he can find his fun again with development of Ether SX2 and yeah, I guess it doesn't look like that the the whiners, the complainers, that they will go away. So I think it's better for the developer just to uh, stay on closed channels. Um, yeah, it's 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 a pity because I can understand that it's, or at least it can be so much fun when you share your work with the world and that you get so much positive feedback but unfortunately and i'm pretty sure it's just a minority but as often as it is the minority they will mess it up for the majority so all i can do is wish the developer all the best in the future and yeah that's all for now and i hope to see you again in my next video